And it says there is a such disease of people that have a craving to eat flesh. It does exist. It's not something that was made up by horror movies. It's a reality. And where did it come from? Right out your body. Right here. God created in the hearts and minds of his own people the desire to eat other human beings. Now, Christians, you believe in this King James Version. And Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, y'all believe in this King James Version. We want you to come give us an explanation for this. We want to know, what, you know why should we follow a God that will tell the Bible? Jacob is starting this off by saying, would you follow a God that tells you to eat your kids? You would deserve it all. That's what I did two weeks ago. When I said, would you follow a God that tells you to hate your mother and hate your father and hate your kids and hate everybody, you said, no, I'm not showing you where Jesus tells people. Hate your mother, hate your father, hate your wife, hate even yourself, or you can't be my disciple. <laughs> Jesus said, sell your sandals and buy swords. Oh, he's peaceful. First of all, if you're God, you got the power to multiply bread and fish, and walk on water. Why are you telling your disciples to buy swords? What would they do with swords? If you can walk on water, you will never get thirsty. That's the damn show. You can walk on water, you can multiply fish, then you can multiply water, because a fish, like every other animal on this poor, poor region, is predominantly water. So how can he be on the cross thirsty if he had the power to multiply fish? Multiply some fish inside with some water, and the thirst is over. You know, you know what I'm saying? These are things that are pumped down the throat every day. We're talking about six fingers. That's what I said, six fingers. Go to uh, 2 Samuel 21, 15. Somebody read it for us. Anybody got it? 2 Samuel 21. Go to verse 20. What does it say? And there was yet... There was war again. And there was, okay, so this, what, what, see, what Bible you got? That's a shame, man, because I got a King James Bible. Bible too. And mine is saying, and there was yet a battle in God. Is that what y'all said? There was a war again. All right, they left some get out. All right. <laughs> now, what, which one was in the Hebrew? This is supposed to be from the original King James Version. So, what did y'all say? When, on, and was, is y'all also from the original King James Probably on the first page. I'm gonna yeah, Oh, yours is a little new in my home. King James is dead, and they revised in his book. Okay. Yeah. I think we get a new revised version in the office day. I'm gonna put that high. Put that Go ahead. Let's see what happens. Where there was a man of great stature. There was a, a giant, a man of great stature, a big man. Go ahead. Who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number. And he also was born to the giant. Everybody hold their hands up. Who okay. Count your fingers. All right? Now, everybody basically here yeah, hold, got five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot, right? Some people get a little numb. They say, listen up. Man is created according to his Bible in Genesis. In the image and after the likeness of God. Is that right? Now, which is it? Does God have six fingers or does God have five? Come on. So now, who these people? Where they come from? Don't tell me you don't believe in UFO. Don't tell me you don't believe in extraterrestrials. Because if everybody on the whole damn planet got five fingers and the Bible is broken from giants with six fingers, that motherfucker came from somewhere. And it wasn't from down the block. It wasn't on Maple Street. They're not God. They're not a part of God's plan. Nowhere in the Bible says, let us make man in our image, not our likeness, some with five toes and some with six. And they constantly speak about the yard of God, the hand of God. They show it like this when they write in the Tanakh, when they read, but they can't touch it. Because it's the beak of the God, Tahuti, that really did the writing and gave Moses, as they call it, Moshe, what? The negative confession that was written five Ra and the Egyptian book of the dead, which became your Torah. 
But they took them and changed the stories around. Now, the Egyptians have writings of people with six fingers and six toes. They have writings of giants, 12 feet tall in their writings. They have writings of hermaphrodites. That was another conversation they were having. Show me hermaphrodite in your Bible. Hermaphrodites exist on the planet, don't they? It's a scientific fact. Why is it not mentioned in the Bible? Well, that's because it's a long time. This is supposed to be a book for all time. Then show it to me in the New Testament. And let me ask you another question. How old is the New Testament going to have to be before it becomes a part of the Old Testament? Because it's been new for 2,000 damn years now.
the chest with another dot. Why is that going to open? Not that one. That's my house. Uh-huh. Go around that house. Get that devil. Get that crack place over there. Get that liquor store. Get that pub. Get that bar. Don't touch my church. That's mine. Well, yeah. How, how come he doesn't do that? How come when the reverend is preaching, the whole dies in the object car, don't catch him and pick him back up on the phone? <laughs> That's my will. That's my representative here. You keep this alive. Go down there and kill that drug dealer down the block. Drug dealers are surviving.
understand. From a Lutheran, all the statues go out the church. For seven day events, I got to I gotta walk around and I'm supposed to long skirts on the side. And one of the couple winners, I got to knock on the door and irritate just on Saturday. <laughs> Somewhere on the line, it appears uh, that they lost the road of Jesus. Because there's so many roads now. They say, hell, what do you mean? We all join the same place. That's bull crap. It doesn't make a difference. Because if me and you both was on our way from here to Louisiana, and I was going by jet, and you was going by foot, so we are both going the same place, who going to have the most fun? Who going to get there first? All right, now, so if there's a judgment day, and we're all trying to get to God for that judgment day so we can be judged, there will be some long-ass lines on judgment day. Think about it now. If everybody got to be judged, each individual, and God is the only judge, the Bible says, and the Quran says, nobody judges but God. Judge not, lest you be judged. Right? God got to judge you, 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 me, you, you, you. So there'll be some long lines to get in heaven. Now, even if God did like you there, you're bad, go to hell. You're good, go to hell. You're bad, go to hell. You still have to deal with it individually. How many people have been born on the planet? Not how many people are on the planet. How many people have been born on the planet if it existed according to them for 6,000 years to now? How many human beings do you think have been walking on the planet? For all the people in Africa that are Yoruba who don't know about Jesus, they just get a package deal for on the hell. Okay. Y'all go directly to hell, do not pass gold, don't get your $200, but y'all never knew about Jesus. All the people who never... See that philosophy? People who never heard of Jesus, who never got exposed to Jesus, you can't make heaven. So all the monks, the Buddhists, the Zen, the Confucians, and all of them, God is going to direct you to go to hell. Now, Muslims, your ass is going to hell. The Jews, all of them, the Christ, all going to hell. So now we got to deal with the Christians. Now, this is done. Now, when you all the Jehovah's Witnesses over here, all the seven day Adventists next to him, Pentecostal over here, holy names over here, Lutherans over here, Presbyterians over here. Get them all lined up in different groups. I said, could you bring the reverends up front? Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, right behind the reverends, we want the deacons. They're going to be all here. I'm saying, get in the choir. Get in the chicks, all the chicks on the organ right behind them. These are the best people in the church. They're there every Thursday night. All you other people, go to hell. We're not <laughs> so we don't have the time to sort this shit out, so we start with all the good ones now. Now we deal with the reverends. Stand before God right now and put it, I mean, before God where you can't lie. And he'll get as much as heaven. Come on, all y'all were Baptists, and all y'all remember that slimy preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and you know he was a raunchy nigga. All he came out is picnics and picnics. <laughs> right? Where, where, who, who gonna make heaven? <laughs> now, let's go into heaven, y'all. We in heaven, right? Can I talk to you? Can I talk to me? You in heaven, right? Who do you love the most, your mother or your father? So you're going to go to heaven, you have to look for your mother. And see, right now, she's still alive, people. But if, if she passes on, and you can still alive, when you get to heaven, you won't want to see her, right? Who does she love the most, her mother or her father? So who's she going to be looking for? And now, we can't go back for so many generations, but because we know that it happens inside of us, I like somebody better than somebody else. And I'm going to be looking for my grandmother. That's my, that's my closest person. Right? So I'll be looking for my grandmother. Meanwhile, my mother will probably be looking for her mother or father. Meanwhile, her father will probably be looking for his mother or father. You understand? You with this or this? Now, who you be looking for? You don't know who? Yeah, you do have parents, don't you? <laughs> you start over there, but you get it. Let's go there first. You know, you love them both the same. So you're going to be one of those things there. Yeah, it's going to say, 